What would you say if I told you things had never changed and we'll find a way to take our dreams and rearrange them? So let's just pretend that you and me can be just good friends. Then there's the rock climbing, the underwater assault training, and the free fall parachuting. As you can see, Penny, I have quite a full fixtures list. Sounds fun. Where do you do all these things? Evening school mainly. Of course, I go away some weekends. Survival courses. You survived the entire weekend? Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm experienced. Did I tell you I'm a part-time member of the Territorial SAS? No, you didn't, Rupert. Good girl. Forget I said it then. I have. Good girl. I can't afford to have my cover blown. Feel this. <laughs> Why? It's cast iron. Really? I didn't think they'd have someone with an artificial limb join the SAS. What? It's a real arm. I mean, my muscles are like cast iron. I'm very fit, you see. All over. I can march 45 miles without breaking sweat. Look, Rupert, if you fancy a quick yomp, please don't let me stop you. A yomp? Good heavens. I'm not the kind of guy who'll work out on you on our first date. What do you mean, date? This isn't a date, Rupert. You asked me to have a drink with you as a favour. You said your cat had been run over and you needed someone to talk to. I used that line on all the chicks. <laughs> Besides, you're sure to want to see me again. Why? Why? Well, uh, because I'm fun. I'm sure there are a lot of people who'd find you very entertaining, Rupert, like um, a woman's royal army corporal. Or a little boy who's lost his action man, but <laughs> personally, I'm not into bridgeheads and seek and destroy missions. Oh. Well, let's have one for the road. And if we've got time, I'll show you my collection of air guns. <laughs> Great. Right. Uh, what can I get you, um... Sonia. Sonia. Of course. What would you like, Sonia? Can I have a brandy and coke? One brandy and coke. A fence. Can I have a large one? Brandy, a large Coke, and I'll have a pint of best. <laughs> so, uh, have you enjoyed your first day at the firm, Sonia? Yeah, weren't bad. Here, does that Mr. Bennett touch everyone up? Oh, I don't think so, Sonia. Never laid a finger on me. Oh, <laughs> you silly sod. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wouldn't worry about it, Sonia. It's probably some kind of initiative test. Did I hear you say something earlier on about your parents flying off on holiday? Yeah, they left this morning. They've gone to Torre Molinos. Oh, well, uh, maybe if I take you home tonight, you can give me a guided tour of the ancestral maze, innit? You must be joking. I know your game. You get one foot inside the door and try your luck. Not me, Sonia. On my honour, I wouldn't. Really? Well, all the others do. <laughs> See, that's my trouble, Vince. What is? Well... I like sex. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that's bad of me? No, Sonia, no, no. On the, on the contrary, I, uh, I think it's very good of you. I mean, it shows an enlightened attitude. Right, well, uh, get that down here. We'll go back to your place and discuss it in more detail. <laughs> I wanted a large one. I've never had any complaints, Sonia. <laughs> there you go, Penny. Now, where was I? Um, you were doing something incredibly masculine. You just stormed an embassy or eaten three shredded wheat. Mm. I don't remember either. Still, it'll come back to me in a minute. Oh, good. Punch me in the stomach. <laughs> Go on, punch me in the stomach. Hard as you like. Rupert, there is a time and a place for punching people in the stomach. Well, perhaps later, when we're alone. Yes, yes, I'll kick you all around the car park if you like. <laughs> uh, would you excuse me? Where are you going? To the ladies' room. What for? <laughs> to powder my nose. Powder your... Enough said. Oh, God, why me? We'll drink up then, Sonia. We'll get going. Yeah. 
I can't drink as fast as you. Want a fag? Uh, no, thanks. I uh, gave them up. So did I. You, uh... You ever try one of these? What is it? A nasal spray? No, no, don't stick it up your nose, Sonia. It's not a nasal spray, it's an imitation cigarette. You see, every time you fancy smoke, you puff on this plastic one instead. Does it work? Oh, it works. Marvellous. I haven't had a smoke since last night. <laughs> that, they do me much good. I got no willpower. I just can't say no. No will. Uh, drink up then, Sonia. <laughs> do you like my tattoo? Oh, that's, uh, that's nice, Sonia. Uh, what's it supposed to be, uh, a starling? No, it's a lovebird. I wanted an eagle, but Mick said it weren't ladylike. Well, I suppose an eagle is a bit... Mick? My boyfriend. He's an amazing bloke. Do you know, he can't read or write a word, yet he formed his own chapter of the Earl's Angels in Borstal. <laughs> oh, uh, that is amazing. Um, this here, um, Stormtrooper. Mick. Uh, yeah, Mick. Um, you and him going steady, are you? I like to think of it as an open relationship. I go out with who I like. Oh, well, he's got a very enlightened attitude as well. Oh, he don't like it. No, I didn't think he <laughs> gets ever so jealous. Follows me sometimes. Does he? Um, violent type, is he? No. Psychiatrist said he only stabs people to hide his basic shyness. <laughs> oh, well, as uh, long as he doesn't mean it, that's the main thing. Um, I'm just popping over to the cigarette machine. Okay. He only stabs people to hide his basic shyness. When you do something nice and safe, Pinner, like having an affair with the wife of a mafia boss. <laughs> Oh, I just don't believe it. I think it's broken. I hope not. I'm a vandal. <laughs> Hello, Penny. Vince. Well, <laughs> what a surprise. Yes, yes it is, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Has been the toilet? Uh, yes. Sorry. <laughs> I wasn't trying to... I, I didn't know if you were... or if you... No, no, I... already. Fine, fine. Well, you're, uh, you're looking very nice. Oh, thank you. You're looking well. Yes, well, uh, <laughs> I play games, uh, Paul, brag, that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only about six pounds ever than when we last met. Really? My mother always said you'd run to fat. <laughs> <laughs> Did she? Bless her. <laughs> How is your mother? Oh, fine. Oh, good. Good. Well, it's, uh, it's been a long time. Must be almost five years. Five years and three months, I guess. Is it that long? I'm surprised you remember me. Oh, I can never forget you, Vincent. You've always been unique. Huh. <laughs> You're the only bastard who ever jilted me. Oh, come on, Pen. I, I, I didn't jilt you. You didn't Did you turn up at the church? Now, that's a loaded question, isn't it? Why don't you go and play with a power cable or something? You could at least hear my side of the story. I've already heard your side of the story. Oh, really? Who told you? Your mother? No. Your best man, Lenny What's-His-Name, when he called round on the day of the wedding. So, will you let me explain? I'm far too busy. I only want to talk. Well, you carry on then, Vincent. I'm going to get some fresh air. Penelope! Don't worry, I'll get her for you. Vince? Uh, I'm just getting her for him. Won't be a bow. <laughs> Wait a minute, Pen. I only want to talk, that's all. I haven't got anything to say to you, Vincent. Well, maybe I've got something to say to you. Now, oh, come on, Penn, it's been five years. What difference will another couple of minutes make? All right. Go on, then, speak. Well, look, we can't talk here. There's an Italian restaurant just down the road. Do you mean have a meal? 
Now we'll play a game of squash in there. <laughs> yes, I mean, let's have a meal. For old time's sake. Look, Vince, it might have escaped your notice, but I am with someone, and so are you. you. You can't simply walk off and leave people. Well, you could, Vince, but then you've had practice. Oh, okay, don't keep on about it. Can't you make some excuse to him? Sorry, I'm right out of excuses. around sometime. I wonder why of all the things that get broken in a person's life, it's always the most precious one that can never be repaired. I could tell him I've got a headache. Yes. Yes, that's very good, Penelope. Tell him you've got a headache. What about that girl you're with? Oh, uh, well, I'll tell her she's got a headache as well. Let's forget the excuses, eh, Pen? I think those two are going to be uh, rather tied up for the next few minutes. How's the meal? Sorry? Oh, lovely, thank you. How do you know? You haven't eaten any of it yet. Just keep prodding it around as if you're preparing it for delousing. I'm hungry. Oh. Well, it was a good idea coming to a restaurant then, wasn't it? I didn't ask to come to a restaurant. No, 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 that's true. Well, <clears throat> this is very nice. Where are you working now, Pen? You were uh, still at the quarry? I work for an advertising agency in Park Lane. Have you ever heard of Matthew Stiles and Lieberman? Uh, yes, I think I've got a couple of their OPs at home. <laughs> uh, no, I've never heard of them. No, well, you wouldn't, would you? Not in your line. Still driving the ice cream van, are you? Uh, no, I uh, gave that up a long time ago. I'm an accountant now. Oh, an accountant? You mean people actually trust you with their money? Oh, yes. I steal some of it sometimes. <laughs> Only as a first resort, though. Absolutely. So what sort of accountant are you? Chartered? Turf. <laughs> I'm an assistant branch manager. Sounds very exciting. Oh, it is. I uh, almost wet myself at times. <laughs> well, uh, now we've got the pleasantries over and done with, shall we uh, talk about us? About what happened? No. I don't want to talk about it, Vince. All right, Penn, I, I understand. Nice weather we've been having. Nice weather? Five years ago, you walked out on me on our wedding day and you want to talk about the bloody weather? <laughs> you said you didn't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it, but I don't mind listening to you. I mean, just tell me why, Vincent. There's no point, Pen. You'd never believe me. Try me. All right, then. Here goes. A long time ago, before we met, I did something wrong. Not very wrong, but still wrong. On the eve of our wedding, the past finally caught up with me. I was arrested and locked away in a living hell they called prison. I couldn't write and tell you. I mean, what would your mother have said? Besides, I couldn't expect you to share that nightmare. For three years, I rotted in that cell. Three years of just thinking about you and tending to the Little sparrows that used to hop through the bars of my cell window. All right, what really happened? My bottle went. <laughs> Your bottle went? Yeah, it means... I know what it means, thank you, Vincent. I just don't understand why. I mean, we had everything. New flat, honeymoon in Greece, and the presents. A tumble dryer, a dishwasher, a food processor... A cuddly toy. <laughs> look, look, I was young, Pen. I couldn't handle the pressure anymore. 
From the moment the wedding was mentioned, your mother took total control. It was our lives, our future, but we became bit part players in her grand opera, inconspicuous by our presence. She moved on on us like a junta. Should we have a big wedding or a simple cathedral job? How many thousand <laughs> bridesmaids shall we have? Where can we get 50 bejeweled elephants from? <laughs> she was carving out my future for me and, and it was taking on the distinct shape of an executioner's block. Oh, no, Vince, you had it all wrong. You were the last man on God's earth she wanted me to marry. I know that. She didn't want her daughter marrying the son of a Walthamstow scrap metal dealer. Exactly. No. She wanted you to marry someone named Julian. I have lots of kids with big ears and no chins. <laughs> but she finally resigned herself to the fact that she was lumbered with me. So she thought, well, he's... he's young. He's white. He doesn't wash his feet in the B-Day. <laughs> I'll mold him. Get him a job at Daddy's firm, membership of the golf club, teach him to sound his H's and respect Volvos. And before you knew it, I'd have been the world's first bionic Tory. <laughs> oh, don't be so stupid. They say if you want to see your wife in 30 years' time, just look at her mother. God, oh, it was horrifying. <laughs> Let's not get personal, Vince. I don't know how your father ever managed to relax in bed with her, let alone sleep. <laughs> That's enough, Vincent. It must be like giving next to a Gurkha. <laughs> Is there any point in us continuing this conversation? I just want you to understand how I felt. And do you mind not smoking while I'm eating? I am not smoking and you are not eating. This is a plastic cigarette. Matches your heart. <laughs> it is a scientifically designed placebo for those of us desiring a longer life. Oh, will you please stop pushing that food around your plate? Reminds me of a documentary I saw. <laughs> Just an accident. <laughs> One empty tea. Look, Ben, I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm a little overwrought at the moment. I'm trying to give up smoking and it makes me edgy. All right. I'm sorry as well. How long have you been trying to give it up? Since I started. I've tried everything. Chewing gum, pills, even acupuncture. Acupuncture? Yeah, they left me sitting there for an hour with this big needle sticking out my earlobe. <laughs> I had a fag to pass the time. <laughs> well, I can't stand anything like that. Needles and injections. Oh, there was no discomfort. But didn't you feel a prick? Well, I felt a bit foolish. <laughs> I see what you mean. Uh, <clears throat> no, there was, uh, there was no pain. No pain. I've got a high tolerance level to pain. So have I. Now. Look, Pen, I know I hurt you badly, but I was being pushed and pulled in all directions. I was being squeezed dry. I wasn't a man anymore. I felt more like a lemon. You felt like a lemon? How do you think I felt? Standing there in my bridal gown, telling the vicar there'd been a slight change of plan. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Penny, you've lost me. Why'd you put your dress on? Why'd you go to the church? You knew the wedding was off. I sent you a telegram. Hundreds of people sent telegrams, you idiot. It was a wedding. They were all sent to the reception hall to be opened and read out in the evening. You mean you didn't know? You went ahead with the wedding? No, I cancelled it in the end, Vince. I felt it just wouldn't be the same without you. <laughs> I didn't know, Pen. Honest, I didn't know. If my father and I drove past that church once, we drove past it a hundred times. I kept praying you'd had an accident. I didn't know what had happened until Lenny Watts's name arrived. Well, he was very sympathetic and understanding. He said, sorry, doll, the wedding's off. Vince has done a moody. <laughs> he then asked me out to dinner and put in a bid for some of the presents. I mean, why didn't you come round to the house and tell me yourself? I couldn't. Why? Why? Because... Well, it's bad luck to see the bar oh. before you. <laughs> I did try to phone you, but the line was engaged all the time. So it was most probably Daddy trying to phone the evening guests and tell them not to bother. Look, if you couldn't face me on the actual day, you could at least have tried to contact me later. I did try to contact you later. About a year later. I came round your house every night for a week. I couldn't just casually knock on the door, so I parked a few yards up the road and waited, just hoping to see you. I used to sit there for hours, just watching the light in your bedroom. I suddenly realised that 
This would have been about the time of our first anniversary. <laughs> I remember thinking, she's sitting up there now, pining. I wasn't. We'd moved. <laughs> did it take you to get over what happened I'm not sure if you ever do it's the strange thoughts that run through your mind when you've experienced something traumatic like that I began wondering whether I was to blame no you wasn't Ben. I know I wasn't I only wondered fine I began analyzing myself in the mirror wondering whether there was something antisocial about me did I have bad breath or blackheads or maybe my armpits smelt Oh, I love it when you talk dirty to me, Ben. Will you be serious for once in your life? Sorry, dear. Oh, God, there's been an accident. <laughs> yeah, nasty business. I'll, uh... You can't begin to imagine what you did to me that day. I can, Ben. I just wish there was some way I could repay you. Repay me? How can you repay someone for five years of self-doubt? Five years of... nothing? Well, maybe I could buy you a handbag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? I'll have to try and remember that one for my next group therapy session. Just trying to uh, add a bit of levity to the inquest. What kind of a handbag? <laughs> Here we are. Have you got a car? Me? Mm. Yes, uh, a BMW. It's, um... It's uh, been serviced. <laughs> oh, well, um... I could give you a lift home, if you like. That's all right, Pen. The, uh, the walk could do me good. Uh, look, Vince, there's something I ought to tell you. Things are kind of different with me now. You're not a man, are you? <laughs> this is important. OK. I'm married. Oh. Well, that's clear the cobwebs away, hasn't it? Do you know it didn't even cross my mind to ask? How about you? No. Nah. You know me, Pen. I'm not a marrying kind. Where's your uh, husband tonight, then? God, it wasn't that poor bloke we left back at the pub. Oh, no. No, I, I don't know where he is. The marriage didn't work out. Oh. I'm, uh, sorry. Kids? Yeah. I suppose that's all we were, really. <laughs> no, I mean, did you have any children? Oh, no. No children. Well, I suppose I ought to be getting home. Thank you for the meal. It was lovely. Thank you for a very pleasant evening. My God, you've got the nerve. <laughs> Five years ago, you jumped on your motorbike and rode out of my life. Now you think you can buy your way back with a few cheap jokes and a lump of lasagna. I mean, how do you become such an arrogant pig? It's just the neck, I suppose. I'll tell you one thing. I'd rather be an arrogant pig than a toffee-nosed little cow. Are you referring to me? I don't see any other toffee-nosed little cows around here. Do you? <laughs> With a bit of luck, Vincent, we won't meet again for the rest of our lives. Fingers crossed, Penelope. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Wouldn't it be terrible if we, uh, accidentally bumped into each other again? Soon? I hope not. So do I. 
I hope to God you're not down at the Red Lion tomorrow night. About eight o'clock. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 